PC gaming is fun, something I really love, but as someone who grew up with a controller in his hands, having to play a game I really enjoy with no alternative other than the, the WASDA keys on the keyboard and a mouse, geez, uh, it gets cumbersome and starts to feel like a chore. It has, however, increased the learning curve for me having to game without a controller, which is a challenge. I more than welcomed when I jumped into PC gaming with games like Valorant. I play it all the time without a controller because, uh, well, I have no choice. It's on PC. But Riot decided to do something different recently, which will undeniably change the game, literally. And that's bring it to consoles, both the Xbox Series editions and the PS5, which means Full on controller friendly gameplay, baby. Oh, oh my god. No more trying to get a controller third party hack on your PC, which will, I mean, it'll likely end in you getting banned on PC. The Riot Gods have finally blessed those console gamers and people that want to play with a controller out there with the option to enjoy one of the most goaded 5v5 shooters on the market. Now, I was fortunate enough to get into the console beta launch of Valorant, and it's been an amazing experience so far. Like, it felt weird, though, to be quite honest with you. In the beginning, having spent, you know, a year or so playing the game strictly on my gaming PC, with my curved monitor right in front of my face, my eyes glued to my mini-map, watching every single movement, probably the reason why I have such bad eyesight. I really do. I really do. But now I can just chill on my couch instead of my gaming chair and frag away on my television while some 13-year-old in Oregon is, is screaming at me for not going be long. It's, it's unrated, my guy. Jeez, re relax. Ain't, ain't nothing on the line here. Jeez. But I want to talk about the benefits of console gaming in Valorant, the Valorant console version, because having spent a, a few hours and about a week now, I'm almost tempted, I am very tempted to, to never go back to Valorant on PC. That's not true. I'm always going to play it on PC, but it just feels so right playing it with a controller. But you know, I might not be the only one that that's saying this. There are probably other people out there, you know, that might just stick to playing it on console. Unless, you know, they're feeling nostalgic for the experience that got them into the game in the first place. And also, I should mention this, there's a lot more skilled players on PC, but that's only because console gameplay is still new and fresh. And there's a lot of newcomers to the game. In fact, there are quite a few people that said this is my first time playing Valorant. I'm like, that's so cool. This is, ain't you cute? We're gonna lose because of you. But the question is, what do I like about playing Valorant on console? A aside from the controller aspect, which I will get into because the controllers just feel so smooth and I love it so much. I really want to talk about the UI. Let's start there. Now the UI on console, in my opinion, is way better. Now it's, it's a lot cleaner. Now the scoreboard display looks a lot nicer here than on PC and I personally like the buy menu. It feels a lot more intuitive. But I will say, if you're coming from the PC version, it may seem a bit difficult to navigate, which is to be expected when, you know, you don't have a cursor and use a controller instead. And speaking of the controller, because I won't shut up about it, well, let's talk about the controller, can we? Because that's the main thing. I think a lot of folks coming from the PC build, which is only playable via keyboard and mouse, might judge Valorant's console counterpart on. Now, how does it feel? Well, let me just tell you right now, it feels so good. You ever sat in one of those vibrating huh? chairs, like at the strip mall, and, and your butt's huh? like just, your entire body, not just your butt, but everything is just vibrating? That's kind of how it feels when you're playing Valorant. Let me just say it feels good. And let me just tell you again, it feels good. I can't stop saying that it does. But with any console port of a once PC only game, there's bound to be some limitations or differences longtime players might notice. Now, for one, there's something called focus aiming. Now, this is new here. This is something, It's I, I gotta say though, it's really, really cool because it lowers your sensitivity for more precise aims on targets. That's super useful for guns that uh, don't necessarily have any ADS, which is aim down sight. Now, I like it, I love it, and it helps me with gun control, because I, I need some gun control. Also, my aim just sucks. <laughs> 
Now, it's really something I'm so glad they added to the console build as it did a good job in helping me with focus aiming in mid-range gunfights because I need all the help I can get. I'm seriously, my, my aim is trash. I think it's my glasses. It's, it's the glasses. Now, one other thing that's really important to have in a game so heavily built on teamwork is comms. Being able to communicate some way, some form or fashion with your teammates. And no, I'm not just talking about callouts. I need more than just the generic standardized callouts. Now, in this day and age, you would think everyone might have a working headset with a microphone for party chat on console. And you'd be wrong. Now, I had about like one or two team members who were on comms and we were able to properly lay out our strat for each round, which was beneficial to us potentially winning said round. But there were other players on our team who we we weren't sure if they could even hear us, which is what it is. It is what it is, I guess. You know, I'm not blaming anyone for not having, you know, a headset with a microphone on it. But I will say this. If you're playing on PS5, the cool thing about the DualSense controller is that it has a built-in microphone. So there's really no excuse for anyone that owns a PS5 to not be able to talk back to someone else. Unless, I don't know, maybe you just don't like the sound of your own voice, which I understand. I hate mine. I sound like frickin' Kermit the Frog. And this is my regular voice. This is my Kermit the Frog voice. Hi-ho. See, it's too similar. It's weird. Also, what I love about the controller is that in order to just walk so as to slowly push without uh, alerting your ops, all you have to do is slightly tap the joystick. No more having another button to press on the keyboard to slowly encroach on your enemies is great. That's a great feature. Again, I'm not knocking keyboard and mouse, not that type of mouse, mouse, but yeah, I gotta say, playing with a controller is just mwah. All right, now we spoke about the positive. Let's talk about the negative, shall we? One thing that does upset me with Valorant on console is the fact that I wasn't made aware, nor was it initially revealed to me that you have more of an advantage choosing beta access on your Xbox console if you have Game Pass than if you just have a PS5 with maybe a PS Plus account. If you have Game Pass, you get all the agents unlocked and day one access to every new agent down the road, plus 20% match XP boost to your battle pass and event content. Now, I got both consoles. I got the Xbox Series X and I got my PS5 right here, all right? Now, here I am sitting here with a nice shiny game pass on my Xbox Series X, but because this info wasn't posted before I chose my platform of choice, the PS5, I, I, I gotta continue to grind it all out to get all the damn agents. And presumably, unless you have like, a, I don't know, like a, a friend who has uh, an extra beta code for Xbox, well, you're stuck with your platform of choice if you chose the PS5, even if you have both consoles. Now, it would be quite nice to have, you know, a similar thing rolled out to PS5 users. Like maybe if we connect our accounts to our Riot accounts and maybe we have PS Plus, uh, we have one of the tiers, we get similar perks. Now, I've got the highest tier you can get in PS Plus, the premium tier, and yet I'm getting none of the benefits, which really sucks, and hopefully Riot will, will add some sort of incentive for PlayStation users in the near, near future, especially if you own both consoles. Like, I own both consoles and I have, like, premium subscriptions for both. How come I can't get access to that cool stuff that the Xbox people get? Microsoft? Microsoft, I love you too. This is how much I love Microsoft. Look at, or Xbox. This is an Xbox jacket. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. I love you. Can I get my free agents unlocked, please? Jeez. But putting that particular gripe aside, Valorant on console is undeniably a game changer in the FPS game space on Xbox and PS5 for the sheer fact that the competition, it, it ain't much. Like, I mean, what, 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 what do we got? We got, we got Halo Infinite, which isn't as popular as it used to be. Apex Legends is a battle royale game, so that's out of the question. Overwatch 2, Overwatch 2. The Overwatch League ended seemingly due to, I don't know, a bunch of bad business decisions. 
Valorant's competitive esports division is going strong and continuing to grow with every single passing year. It is so popular. And now, with Valorant launching on consoles, Riot is clearly banking on growing its user base even more, catering to gamers looking for more of a challenge outside of mainstays like Fortnite and whatever the hell the finals is. I know what it is, it's the final of the finals. I just don't like it that much. I always hated finals. When I was in school, I hated finals. And the fact that they made a game called the finals, well, y'all just screwed yourselves in my eyes. But I should probably mention another game that's really, really popular, and that's Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, uh, that's really popular, but it's not free to play, and it'll likely take you longer to access its operators than it would take you to access the agents in Valorant. Plus, Valorant is free to play. Call of Duty is another one I should probably mention. It's up there as well, but I mean, that'll cost you every single year. Those games are expensive. Valorant on console is something really special. Valorant in general is, is something truly, truly special. And I'm honestly curious to see how the console version grows. Like if Riot continues to support it throughout and beyond its beta, allowing the console gaming community to grow and, and provide feedback, it'll likely become a, a viable and worthy competitor within the FPS space on consoles. Like I'm, I'm just hoping, you know, we'll see that continue support with Valorant on console and this isn't just some some novel idea cooked up which honestly I doubt it is I, I, I think they're gonna put a lot of effort into growing this community I think Riot is banking on this game blowing up on console and honestly I can't wait to see all the improvements that'll be made uh, likely by the end of this year with Valorant on console. And if you haven't already tried it, maybe you've been holding out or maybe you just don't own a console, eh, that's cool. If you own a PC, you can play it on PC. But if you own a console and you own a PC and you've only experienced Valorant on PC, I would encourage you to at least check it out just to see what it's like if you, you know, if you can get a beta code, get beta access to it. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. If you like this, please, there's a subscribe button somewhere and a like button. If you didn't like it, there's like a dislike button. You can click that. I won't be able to see it because it's like, you know, YouTube removed the dislike buttons. But anyways, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. All right, let's do like an explosion or something. Like an, I'll, I'll drop something. Here, here we go. Uh, yeah, I'm doing this. Bam!